Welcome to Stand Courageous. I'm Tony Perkins, President of the Family Research Council, and I'll be your host on our journey toward biblical manhood. During our time together, we plan to explore five core roles and God-given responsibilities of what it means to be a biblical man. Coaching us through these biblical principles will be a couple of seasoned soldiers, Lieutenant General Jerry Boykin and Dr. Stu Weber. But in this first video, General Boykin will take the lead. General Boykin serves as the Executive Vice President for the Family Research Council, an original member of the Army's Delta Force. General Boykin commanded these elite warriors in combat operations like Black Hawk Down, ultimately leading all of the special forces for the United States Army. General Boykin is an ordained minister whose passion is to encourage men to become warriors in God's kingdom. He's the author of several books, notably Man to Man, which is the foundation of our study on true masculinity. I encourage you to get a copy. Now, here is General Boykin. Hi guys, I'm Jerry Boykin. Thanks for joining us in our Stand Courageous program. You know, Stand Courageous is designed to encourage men to be what God's called them to be, what their nation needs them to be, and what their family expects them to be. There's an all-out assault on masculinity today. In fact, you see it all the time. We're combining the word toxic with masculinity. Well, God's design for men is to be masculine and there's nothing toxic about that. When a man fulfills his role, the nation benefits, the church benefits, the community benefits, and the family benefits. It's time for us to start talking straight with men about what men are supposed to be. You know, there was a time when there was no question about what a man was supposed to be. There was a time when it was, it was understood that a man was the leader in the home, that a man was the leader in, in the church and society as a, as a whole. And now all of that has been called into question. Well, I could tell you stories about a lot of men. I could go back and tell you stories about our founding fathers, men who put everything on the line for a transcendent cause, for an idea, for a belief that they had. I could tell you about some of the great soldiers and sailors and airmen and marines. Men like Chesty Puller, the most decorated marine in history. You know, men that uh, have served their country. Men that I've seen in battle, that I've seen earn a medal of honor. But let me tell you about a man that never received a lot of accolades and a man that uh, most of you, probably all of you, have never heard of. A man named Cecil. Cecil was a man's man. In 1943, right after Cecil turned 17 years old, he sneaked off the farm that he lived on and went into town and enlisted in the United States Navy, even though his parents had told him that he couldn't because he had four brothers that were already in the European theater serving and they needed him on the farm. But Cecil was not to be denied. He was not going to be left out of this war. He wanted to do his part, play his role. And Cecil went off to war on the 6th of June, 1944, as the sun came up over the beautiful beaches of Normandy. Cecil was driving a landing craft. A landing craft that was bringing the 1st Infantry Division ashore there at Omaha Beach. And all of a sudden there was an explosion. Cecil didn't know what happened, but he woke up in Bethesda Naval Hospital. And he woke up realizing that there was something bad wrong. And then the doctors told him that he had lost the vision in his left eye and he would be blind the rest of his life. And that they would be discharging him. Well. They discharged him from the Navy. Cecil came home to the tobacco farm, married his sweetheart, and began to raise his own family. But Cecil had a yearning to serve his country. You see, Cecil loved America. Cecil loved the flag. He loved the national anthem. He loved his family. And the day would come that Cecil would love God above all else. 
Well, finally Cecil found out that the U.S. Army, at the beginning of the Korean War, had a program that would take disabled veterans if they could still serve. The only thing was Cecil had to pass the physical, and he did. And for the second time in his life, he took an oath, a solemn oath, that said, I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and that I'll bear true faith and allegiance to the same. You see, Cecil loved this country, and he loved his family. All he ever wanted was opportunity. He never wanted a handout. He wanted opportunity. And they allowed him to come back in the Army, and he served in the Army through the Korean War. And then after the war, Cecil was discharged a second time and went back to the farm and continued raising his family. And then the United States Marine Corps came along and said, uh, Cecil, we'll give you an opportunity to serve the Marine Corps, but not in uniform as a civilian. And Cecil seized that opportunity for the third time. He raised his right hand and he took that oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. You see, he was bound by this passion and desire to serve his country. And for 32 years, he served in the United States Marine Corps, deploying to Vietnam and into the Middle East and other places with the United States Marine Corps. And then finally, Cecil retired and continued raising his family. But Cecil was a man that, that had deep held beliefs about what a man was supposed to be. When his parents were too old to farm anymore, they had no place to go. And, and Cecil took his disability pension and he bought them a home. He actually had it built for them and they lived in it until they died. You see, Cecil knew that it was not the government's responsibility to take care of his family, it was his. He was a man. He was a man's man. He was a man that took his responsibility seriously. You know, and that was at a time when Cecil's own family was living in a rented house. But Cecil didn't care. It was his responsibility to take care of his families. How many men are walking away from their families today? How many men are failing? to serve their families, their wives and their children. Cecil had a very good friend that lost his home to a fire. When his home burned down, Cecil took all the money that he could muster and just gave it to his friend. Again, at a time when he struggled just to pay his own bills. But his friend needed his help and Cecil was not going to deny him. Cecil was a man that wanted opportunity but not a handout. Well, Cecil was a man's man. He loved to hunt and fish, and he really loved sports. When Cecil's children had all left home and were either in college or out on their own, Cecil's granddaughter came to him one day and said, Grandpa, there's a little boy named Shakif that doesn't have a father, and..." And would you be willing to take him in and let him live here? And Cecil thought about it and then Cecil said, yeah. And Cecil took in Shakif. Shakif was a bright young boy, a boy full of enthusiasm and a boy that was glad to have a man in his life. And Cecil told his wife, Shakif is gonna live with us for a while. He even told his children, this is Shakif. Treat him like your brother, because he's going to be living with us. He taught Shakif to play baseball, bought him all the best equipment he could find, and Shakif turned out to be a pretty good baseball player. Cecil believed that the worst thing that could happen to a young boy was to grow up without a man to teach him, to mentor him, to show him the way, and to keep him on track. One day, Shakif's race became an issue because some of Cecil's friends said, what are you doing? Don't you realize this boy is black? In this very racist environment. And uh, Cecil had a very flowery way to respond to their inquiry. I can't repeat it on camera here, but he told them where they could go. And he told them what they could do. If you get my drift. 
hey, we're men, right? But Shakif stayed with Cecil until he was ready to go home. You know, Cecil's great passion was this, baseball. It, it, it really energized him, and he enjoyed seeing young boys learning the sport of baseball and out there playing and learning to compete and learning sportsmanship. Well, before Cecil died, they named the local high school baseball field after Cecil. They called it Boykin Field. Yeah, he was my dad. I grew up watching him. I saw his love and passion for America. He loved the national anthem. He loved the flag. He would stand, even when he was feeble, when a parade came by and, and the flag was flying. Cecil would stand. He loved this country. And before Cecil died, he made Jesus Christ the Lord of his life. And for the next 10 years, his family watched him enjoying this newfound faith. Guys, where are the men like Cecil? We need these men. We need these men to take their responsibilities as men seriously. And they understand what masculinity is. Masculinity is about making tough decisions and being responsible. Masculinity is about standing for what you believe in and defending those values that you believe in. Cecil did all of those things. He was a real role model for me and my brother and my sister. Guys, I'm asking you now to think about what your role is in your home, in your church, in your community, in this country. And I'm asking you to stand courageous because America needs you. God bless you.